Hi everybody, in this video we're going to learn how to use a servo with the micro bit. So a servo is a little motor that looks like this. It's controlled a little differently than a DC motor. The way a servo works is you send pulses of voltage to it and the length and, uh, of those pulses determines what angle it's set to. And it's actually locked in position when it's getting those pulses of voltage. So um, you should never try to turn it by hand when it's turned on. You want to make sure you only turn it by uh, using the programmable microcontroller, your micro bit. The servo has three pins connected to it on a little pigtail. And so to connect this to a micro bit, identify the color of your pins. There's two types of servos you may be most likely to work with. One of them has um, the red, black, and white pins on the pigtail. And um, to connect to those, connect the same color jumper wires to those pins, so black to black, red to red, and then get another color like yellow or white connected to the white. Those go to alligator clips, and you want to be careful to make sure these alligator clips don't accidentally touch or anything. You could cause some damage if they do. And then those alligator clips go to your micro bit. So I use color matching um, alligator clips to my jumper wires, black to ground, red to um, pin or it's pin 3V, 3 volts, and then the one that's not black or red, in my case it's green, that one goes to pin 1. The other kind of servo you might have is one that has um, brown, red, and orange wires, and that one shows up in the simulator here, so I'm going to show you how to do the software so you can see what that servo looks like. Um, to connect the programming for the servo, I'm going to open up Make Code, start a new project, and go to this button down here at the bottom, scroll all the way down, and find Extensions. Click on that. In Extensions, there is um, a block that says Servo, so we can include the Micro Servo Library. Click on that. Okay, when you do that, you get a library in your toolbox that says servos. So I'll click there and I see some pretty simple programming blocks. So um, I'm going to first grab the easiest one to work with, which is set servo to angle. And I'll just pick that one up and put it in the on start. Okay, it's always a good idea to set your servo to some starting position at the beginning. Our servos go from 0 to 180, so you can set this to be anywhere between 0 and 180. As soon as you add the servo block, you get a picture of a servo in the programming code. And um, you'll notice that their servo has different colored wires. There's brown, red, and um, they use yellow, but yours might be orange. So you're going to connect a black jumper wire to the brown one, and that goes to ground. Brown is ground. Red is still 3 volts. So you'll connect a jumper wire and an alligator clip, and that goes to 3 volts. And then orange goes to pin, uh, whatever pin you're going to use for data. I used pin 1 on my micro bit, so I'm going to set this to be pin 1. And you'll notice the alligator clips shifts over. Okay, so red to 3 volts always, brown or black to ground, and then orange or white, whatever the other color is, goes to your data pin. In my case, it's 0. Okay? Um, so then, there's a few things that you can do with the servo. Um, one thing, of course, is you can just have it snap to a position when something happens. So let's say when I push button A, I want the servo to switch to position 180 degrees, and maybe when I push button B, it goes back to zero. Um, to program that, I go to Input, and I'm going to get the On button pressed. I'll grab two of them, one for button A and one for button B. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my set servo angle to, duplicate it, and snap it in both of them. We'll set button A to be 180, and then button B to 0. So now you'll see if I push button A, it snaps to 180, and if I push button B, it snaps to 0. Okay. So um, the next thing that you can do is you can possibly have your servo maybe sweep slowly from one position to another. So to do that, instead of having it snap directly to that position, you do a loop, and every time it goes through the loop, it'll um, just add a little bit to the degrees. So this is what that might look like. We'll go to Loops and get a 4 index from, pick it up, 
and snap that into, I'm going to go ahead and snap it into on button A pressed, and then move this one down. So we'll do four index from 0 to 180, and then set servo angle to not 180, but we'll use this red bubble that says index. This variable got created when we put the for loop in. We'll snap index in right there. What this loop will do is when you push button A, it'll set the servo to zero, and then one, and then two, then three, then four, and so on, all the way until it gets to 180. So that it doesn't go too fast and I can control the speed of the sweep, I will also put a short delay in there. So I'll get a pause MS, and I'm gonna set this to a real short delay, like maybe 20 milliseconds. There we go, 20 milliseconds. So um, when it runs, it'll just do a short pause in between each angle, and then you'll see it goes really slowly. So if I push button A, it's going to go from 0 to 180, but go very slowly. So you can use that to control the speed of the um, swipe to that position. How do I get it to go backwards? Well, I use the exact same thing I did to go forwards, but I'm going to do a little bit of math on it. I'm going to duplicate this whole for loop, snap it in the on button B, and I can get rid of this guy now. But instead of, well, this index is still going from 0 to 180, but instead of setting the servo position to the index, I'm going to set it to 180 minus the index. If index is 0, 180 minus 0 is 180. If index is 180, 180 minus 180 is 0. That math has the effect of making the servo um, spindle go backwards. So we'll go to math and get subtraction. Snap that in instead of index, and we'll make this be 180 minus index. So when I push button B, it'll sweep the opposite direction. A goes forward very slowly from 0 to 180. B goes slowly from 180 back down to 0. Okay, the final thing that might make sense to do is let's say you want to use a sensor in your micro bit and you want the servo to be like a visual indicator of what the reading is on that sensor. Um, so this one is kind of fun to play with. Let's say, for example, I'm reading the light sensor and I want the servo to go to a certain position depending on how bright it is in the room. Um, so you could use this as like a, if you want to use an indicator knob or dial instead of um, the electronic display. This is sort of a fun way to show what a sensor is reading. So in the forever loop, what we'll do is we're gonna take a reading from the light sensor. I will go to variables and make a variable called light, and then get a set light to and put that in forever. Go to input and get light level and snap that in there. So over and over again, it's going to read the light level on the micro bit. Now the light level goes from 0 to 255. However, the servo goes from 0 to 180. So I have to be able to convert a reading that goes from 0 to 255 to a reading that goes from 0 to 180. Now normally we'd do a little bit of algebra. We'd do some like linear equation mapping to figure out what the equation is to convert one to the other. However, there's a cheat in this programming language, and it's called the map function. So what I will do is I'm going to go to variables and I'm going to make a variable called servo pause. And I want to convert the light level, a number from 0 to 255, to a number from 0 to 180 that I'll store in the variable servo pause. This is where you can find the cheat function. Scroll down to, actually let's grab a set variable. We'll do set servo pause 2 and snap it in there. And this is where we're going to put the cheat is right where the 0 is. Scroll down and find the um, toolbox called pins. Okay, grab pins. And there's this massive bubble called map. Let me show you how map works. Let's pick up the big map bubble and snap it in to that zero. It makes the block really big. So servo pause is going to be what we get when we take the light variable and we convert it from zero to 255 to a number from zero to 180. I go to variables and get the variable called light. That's where the number is that I'm mapping. Light is a number from 0 to 255. I'm going to convert that to a number from 0 to 180. 
So you can read the map function like that. Take the light variable, it's a number from 0 to 255, convert it to a number from 0 to 180, and it'll convert it on a linear scale to those numbers. And then finally, we can get our servo set angle to. In servos, get set servo angle to, go to P1, and we're going to set that to be this variable servo pause. Okay, and now you'll be able to see, so the, the light level is set to 128 and the servo's at 90 degrees. If I set it all the way down to zero, the servo goes to zero degrees. And if I set it all the way up to 255, the servo goes to 180. It changed a number from zero to 255 to a number from zero to 180. And then you can test this on the physical micro bit, see how much light is shining on it, and when you cover or um, open the light sensor, you'll be able to see the servo go to its correct position. So those are the pro tips on how to program a servo. Um, I'm sure you'll find other creative uses for them. They're a very engaging device and have fun with it.